Hi guys, Anna is here and in this video we're going to discuss everything you need to know about RNA interference such as microRNA and sRNA for your A-level biology. So grab a piece of paper so you can take notes as we go together through this topic and without further ado, let's just jump into it. Okay, so before we can go through this topic, we actually, I need to quickly remind you about gene expression, which we discussed in my previous video. So gene expression is basically using a gene to make a functional product such as protein, for instance. And we are kind of keeping to the idea of the protein in this video as well. So as a reminder, when we go from gene to mRNA, this is the process of transcription, and then from mRNA to protein, there's the process of translation. And in my previous video, we already discussed how epigenetics plays a role and uh, regulates transcription. And we're also going to talk about transcription factors in the further video. But in this video, I decided to discuss how translation can also be regulated. So how can it be slowed down by the process of RNA interference? To be honest with you guys, I think it was one of the most difficult topics I had to learn at school. And so that's why I thought, you know, it's better to make this video sooner rather than later. Okay, so RNA interference and how it regulates translation. So, hopefully I spelled this correctly. And uh, basically the idea is, guys, is that we can slow down the translation. So this is the an RNA interference is this pro is a process of regulating gene expression i.e production of the protein via translation okay so let's say transcription has happened what can a cell do to slow down translation uh, and regulate gene expression okay so there are, it's going to be subdivided into two parts when we're going to go through small interfering rna which is referred to as srna and then we're going to go through microRNA and compare those two processes. Okay, so siRNA, great topic to bring in your essays if you guys do an AQA as well, you know, it's going to get you extra marks, which is always good. Okay, obviously, if you get this correctly. So let's start. This is, guys, a point where I need to tell you that actually there is such thing as double-stranded RNA. You know, up to this, you were always thought that it's only single-stranded, but we can, the cells can make double-stranded RNA. And this is how it happens. So if you see, I've drawn this kind of long RNA strand, which almost kind of folded on itself in this kind of shape of hairpin. And so we actually do in biology call it hairpin, and there'll be hydrogen bonds between the complementary uh, nucleotides there, okay? And what happens next is there is this enzyme called DICER, that will come to this hairpin structure and it will actually chop it up in several pieces, assuming that that piece is a little bit longer. I've made it maybe a little bit too short. So we now have several strands of complementary double-stranded RNAs and they will bind, one of them, let's say, will bind to this protein complex, so many proteins together, called risk complex, okay? And so that double-stranded RNA will sit in there. I haven't drawn my nucleotides too much because I was doing a quick job, but so obviously nucleotides will be complementary. And so at this point, you can guys call that RNA that binds to risk protein complex, you can call it sRNA or small interferon RNA. Okay, what happens next is, is that the basically risk complex will make sure that there'll be no second strand. So basically, we now will get single-stranded sRNA. And let's see how this becomes important. So I'm just going to copy it over here. So we have our sRNA, which is now single-stranded bound to the risk complex. And we are going to have an mRNA strand, which been, had, was produced from transcription. And what will happen is that the sRNA will be complementary to a particular section of mRNA. So it's able to guide the risk complex to that part. And as you can see here, guys, what will happen in a moment is that sRNA is complementary, and it basically, with the risk complex, it will degrade, break down mRNA in two parts. So basically, mRNA is now broken down, which means translation of this particular mRNA can no longer occur, so therefore, the protein production from this mRNA 
can no longer occur because it's now not a functional mRNA. It has been broken down. So this is one of the ways that we can say, okay, the cell can inhibit translation, so a particular protein is not going to be produced. Let's now look through microRNA. It's a very similar process. We're actually going to use it as a revision of sRNA, but there is a tiny difference at the end. So let's start with the hairpin structure. Again, long RNA just folded on itself, and the DICE enzyme is going to come and break uh, that hairpin structure and create double-stranded RNA. Again, guys, nucleotides are not to match. They're much longer, but you know we don't have time to draw many things here. So then that double-stranded RNA is going to bind to risk complex, and at that point, again, it's going to be microRNA, okay? And let me just draw it more to the right. So and at this point is basically what's going to happen is that the risk complex will get rid of that second complementary strand. So we have a single strand of microRNA sitting in the risk complex, and I'm just going to kind of put and say, okay, well, it will be also complementary to mRNA, a certain section of it. However, at this point, there'll be no degradation of mRNA. And what it means is that microRNA will just simply sit on top of the mRNA, and it will be there to temporarily inhibit translation. So if the cell wants to use this mRNA later on, it will just get rid of this microRNA in risk, and the translation will reinitiate, and it will result in the production of the protein. Okay, and this is basically, guys, a summary for microRNA. So sRNA degrades mRNA, microRNA kind of just blocks it, so it becomes inaccessible for the ribosomes, but it's a temporary measure, right? We came to the end of this video. I hope you liked it and find it useful. Please press the thumbs up, support this channel by subscribing as well, and please do let me know in the comments below what topic you want to for me to cover in the next video, especially during exams now. So do let me know, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.